Welcome to this session. Today we would be understanding the classification of mountains. Our aim is to understand the various theories related to mountain building. But before we start on understanding the theories related to mountain building, we must have a basic idea about the classification of mountains. So for our convenience, we have classified mountains based on three categories. The first category we would be talking is based on the geography. The second is the period of origin that means we are talking about the temporal context, we are talking about the origin, so we would be understanding the geological time scale here and finally we would be understanding the process of origin, how various mountains originated. Now this classification of based on process of origin would be a founding stone for our further lectures that we would be doing to understand the theories of mountain building. So let's start with the very fundamental ones that is based on geography. So if I say based on geography, we have four basic categories or classification of mountain types. The first is a mountain ridge. What does a mountain ridge mean? Mountain ridge means a mountain which is, uh, which is a kind of high uh, high hill and I can say it has slope and it has an angle of tilt where it is located. Now if I understand ridge, what is mountain range? Range is made of a series of ridge. So I have a series of mountain ridges that I have and that forms a mountain range. So the classic example I can give is a Himalayan mountain range. Now once I am clear with what is mountain range, then what is this mountain system? When I say system, it includes a series of range. So I have one range, I have another range and I have a third range which is either parallel or perpendicular to this mountain range. So this whole would be known as a mountain system where you include a series of range. So in simple terms, I can say ridge is a single mountain, group of ridge forms range and a group of range forms a system and finally what is cordillera. Cordillera are series of parallel mountains that lie across uh, one another and they, they include valleys as well as, uh, sorry, valleys as well as ridges. A classic example for a cordillera would be Andes mountain range in South America. Now this was the most simple classification that we have talked about. The next classification talks about period of origin. As I said, to understand this, we must be very clear with the geological time scale that we would be covering in a separate session. So here just to do a brief, uh, just to get a brief idea about the geological time scale, you have the three, four eras that we would be discussing here. The Precambrian era, the Caledonian era, Heritian era and Alpine era. Now the Precambrian era is the oldest era that we have considered. It's kind of Cambrian landmass that we uh, talk about. A classic example would be Scandinavian. Scandinavian plateau mountain system would be an example of the Precambrian era. Uh, Precambrian era. The next is Caledonian era. Now Caledonian era includes mountain ranges like Aravlis that is one of the common mountain ranges found in the desert region of Rajasthan. The next is Appalachians and then you have Scotland area. So that would be included under the, under the Caledonian mountain range system and, final, and the next you have the Herikian mountain system. It's much more uh, uh, kind of lying between the Permian and the Permo-Carboniferous period. This period includes mountain ranges system like Altai, Tenshan, then you have Tarim Basin, so regions from Middle Europe. Uh, or I could say central areas of Asia, Central Asia would be covered under Heritian period. 
Uh, now what would be the alpine period? Alpine period is considered as the most recent period or we could say in the tertiary epoch. Now the best thing to understand under alpine range is most of the mountains are result of upliftment of the geosynclines. Now the concept of geosyncline we would be covering in a separate session and this concept of geosyncline is also useful to understand the geosyncline or Oregon theory that was origin theory that was given by Kober where we would be discussing this again in the next class. So uplift geosyncline is any mass of uh, mass which is kind of depressed and it can be either filled with sediment or water and it's kind of mobile in nature. So this geosyncline the crustal mass we consider here, the upliftment of this mass would be considered under the alpine period and this alpine period the examples would be Himalayan mountain range. So you have Himalayas, you have Alps, you have the Rockies and Andes, North America and South America, you have Central Europe and North Asia. So these are the mountain ranges that we talk about under the alpine system and most of the rocks, uh, most of the mountains that were formed under the alpine period would be covered under the theories of mountain building that we would be discussing further. Now the most important classification that we would be discussing today is based on the process of origin. So the last one that we talked about was based on the period of origin. So we talked about how uh, rocks originated and during which period. So that was uh, based on geological time scale and this is based on the process of origin that means how mountains originated. Now there are four basic kind of uh, mountain systems I can say based on the process of origin. The first and the most common would be the fold and the complex mountain structure. These are formed due to the compressive forces and faulting, uh, folding and thrusting of the rocks. So when we will cover the section on folds, we would understand the various types of folds. We would talk about nappies, we would talk about the overthrust and the thrusting. So here, just to give you a brief idea, you have folding of mountain or folding of material that leads to formation of mountain system. And this can be either young fold mountains or old fold mountains. So fold mountains classically belong to the alpine period. Those from the young fold mountains specifically around 10 to 25 million year, years old. In contrast to old fold mountains which are more than 200 years, million years old. So examples of young fold mountain would include Andes, Himalayas, Alps. In contrast to that you have the old fold mountains which would include Urals, Appalachians, then you have the Scandinavian and the Caledonian ranges which fall under old fold mountains. So we have the classification for young fold mountains which is classically the alpine range system and the old fold mountains which is from a primitive range either pre-Campian or Caledonian period. So mostly from the Caledonian period. Then you have the fault or the block mountain. Now fault or the block mountain, the best way to understand is if there is a surface and there is a kind of thrust, what would happen is there would be subsidence of this portion. So I can say this portion subsides here. As a result, what would happen is when there is subsidence that is happening, you would have the suppressed region would be known as Garbin and then you have the region that would be less left away would be known as host and this host forms the mountain. The classic examples of host mountains would be black forest mountains. You have the black forest range, then you have the Nevada basin in the United States. So these are some of the examples of fault, mount, fault block mountains. So you have host which forms the mountain and you have garbon which acts as subsidence. The next is volcanic mountain system. Under volcanic mountain system what happens is you have the lava that erupts out. 
so you have the mountain system uh, you have the surface and you have hot lava that comes out from the interior of the earth when this hot lava comes out with a force outside what happens is it explodes and you have depositions that comes in the form of magma dust lava and all these lead to formation of volcanic uh, mountainous material or ridges a classic uh, best example i could say would be the hawaiian mountain ranges and you have the elysian mountain ranges which both are formed due to volcanic mountain systems or are volcanic in nature finally what happens is once you have a mountain that is significantly formed what would happen is i can say that this mountain has reached its peak once it has reached its peak what would happen is the process of denudation or erosion would become prominent as a result you would have washing away of the top of the mountain ultimately the resultant would be reduction in the height of the mountain so this is due to the process of denudation or erosion we also call this as denuded uh, denuded mountains a classic example would be aravalli mountain ranges in rajasthan in india so you have if i have the map of india here you have the aravalli mountain ranges running north to south from gujarat to nearly new delhi and this aravalli ranges have been denuded or eroded over the uh, due course of time as a result you have lowering of the height and the most important impact that could be seen in this region is the region to the left of or to the west of the aravallis is thar desert and to the east is the fertile area i could say better than the region towards the west but due to lowering in the height of aravallis what is happening is the impact of desertification is moving from left to right as the heights have been reduced you have the waves of uh, dust or sand dunes that are moving through the aravallis as a result i can say desertification has increased in this region so this is one of the implication of the denuded or the erosional mountain system other examples of denuded or erosional mountain systems that i could include is you have uh, the examples of uh, north dakota so the mountain ranges in north dakota we also call these denuded or erosional mountains as kind of relict mountains in future so ultimately they become relict or they kind of uh, lose their importance in the process of mountain building so these are the basic mountains that are based on the process of origin now this process can be understood by various theories that have been led by various scholars the most popular theory among those would be the geosyncline origin theory origin theory given by kober and the most modern theory is the plate tectonics theory for mountain building so when i talk about fold mountains which are formed due to compressive forces you have the world map here and if i try to explain you the list of fold mountains or draw or mark the fold mountains here what would happen is i can say you have rockies andes you have the himalayan range just let's take only three of these and let's try to understand there is something which is common in between all these three so these two which are fold mountains are on a kind of continental ocean margin so the region where continental uh, continent and ocean converge you have a fold mountain range another example of fold mountain range is himalayas where you have two plates of continent that are converging so you have continent continent convergence in this region we would try to understand these concept in more detail when we would be talking about the plate tectonics theory of mountain building in the next class 
so we would be talking about two basic theories or the two most important theories of mountain building in the subsequent class you can subscribe to exam race channel for any further updates stay tuned have a good day